friends welcome back to my channel we're here today for a quick friday reads update and i know i always say that the videos are going to be quick and then they're not but today i think this one will be quick because my daughter is around she's watching a video and i don't know how long that will last before she'll want to barge into this video <laughs> so we're just going to talk a little bit about the books that i've read recently the books that i've finished and the books that i'm currently reading and hope to finish before the end of the month so first we'll talk about the books that I have finished I finished three books since our last check-in finished these three books so I'll tell you a little bit about them I finished on a night like this by Lindsay Kelk I read this one during the weekend vlog so if you haven't yet watched my weekend vlog go check out that video I really enjoy making vlogs they don't get as much viewing and engagement but it doesn't matter <laughs> Some of you like the vlogs and so I'll keep, I'll keep making them. But yeah, I finished On a Night Like This by Lindsay Kelk. The publishers sent this to me. It's marketed as romance, right? Like when you look at this cover, you think romance. There's a picture of a woman in a, a fancy dress and a man in a tuxedo. And there's chandeliers hanging somewhere and it's marketed as romance yeah so the story is about a woman who works as a personal assistant but she kind of works as a temp because she does contracts for different people different times and she's living in Sheffield in England she's engaged to be married but it seems like one of those engagements that have been going on forever with no real plans for when two people want to commit to starting the rest of their lives my husband and I were never desirous of that we met got engaged within a year of knowing each other and we were married within four or five months after the engagement yeah when you met when you meet the person that you want to spend your life with you kind of want the rest of your life to just start from now right isn't that what they always say so in this book, you can tell that this main character and her fiance, they're not really destined to be together because from their interactions, you can see that there isn't any love lost between the two of them. They can't agree on almost anything, but it seems like they're kind of caught in a rut. So that's the backstory. This woman, she gets a job as a temp, temp personal assistant, and it's for a short period. It requires her to go overseas and she can she has to sign a non-disclosure agreement without knowing who she's gonna be working for that's pretty interesting to me like that seems like a kind of fantasy and so a lot about a lot about this book is about a fantasy where she's working for a, a star she's aboard a yacht and it's a little bit of a dream and it's really cool but we spend so much time building up the relationship between this main character and the person she's working for that there wasn't any, that's my daughter, there wasn't any romance going on for most of the book. So while it seems like it's a romance novel, I just really enjoyed this story. There's a little romance that happens and that's what the latter part of the book is focused on. But I enjoyed a lot of things about this book. I enjoy how the author writes about a woman living her life and coming to some realizations about her present and her future and some of the friendships that she has and the interactions that she has that kind of forces her to make decisions about herself but it's not people making decisions for her it's just her learning how to better control her life even though she is skilled and probably talented and gifted at what she does for other people to arrange their lives it's a little bit about how she has to take into account what she wants for herself. And so I like, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed how the author gives these kind of feminine undertones to just someone working out. It's like a coming of age story, but someone who's in their early 30s. And so, yeah, I really like how she treated the relationship and who the person is and what happens between them. I really, like, I really enjoyed that. So I, uh, I gave this maybe about a four star rating. Um, I really liked it though. The next book that I read was also for publisher review. This is Shape Shifting Stories by Michelle Ross and I absolutely love this. I think I gave this one a five star rating on Goodreads. This one is short stories, 14 short stories. Some of them are a little shorter than others, but the focus on here is about mothers and what it requires of a woman to become a mother. What you give up 
consciously or unconsciously, subconsciously, I don't know. But some of the sacrifices of motherhood, some of the things that underlie the joy of motherhood that people talk about, but don't talk about the flip side as much. Because as much as we love being mothers, as much as we love nurturing and caregiving, there's also a toll that it takes on our independence and how much of ourselves we're able to focus on. Um, so I like how the author delves into the psyche of women as they are trying to explore how to really love their children the best way they can, but also still to prioritize themselves. And like, oh man, I just, I felt seen in a lot of these stories. Like I felt like some of the things that I've grappled with, like at night when my daughter refuses to go to sleep or decides to wake me up every time I fall asleep because she wants to sleep and yeah, that kind of thing. Um, hi. hi, you know, I'm talking about you, right? Yeah. You're here for the talk. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> this book is about me. Yeah. So I really enjoy these stories and I recommend them to other mothers and people who want to understand what it means, what it takes to be a mom. Um, the mothers in these stories are not perfect. They're flawed in almost every story, but <laughs> some of them understand. They understood what it would mean to be a mom before they made the decision to start a family. And it's just like the realization of their stories are more of the realization of the day-to-day -day experiences. Um, in a lot of the stories, they are women who are grappling with not having exactly equal partners. Um, <laughs> because in a partnership, quite often, one person is the giver and one's the receiver in, in situations. And, you know, in really good relationships, that alternates because we have strengths, we have weaknesses, hi. and hi, hi. <laughs> we, uh, we take turns. Yeah. So it's really funny because you get to see a little bit of the everyday sacrifice of being unequally yoked in one part of your life. This, this collection is really smart. It's really well written. There's a story in here that's a little bit of a fantasy. Um, like a science fiction fantasy and the author is a science writer so that makes sense but just in general um, love the reflections on motherhood and the realities of everyday life as a mother so highly recommend that one also started and finished within these wicked walls by lauren blackwood which has been on my tbr for a couple of months now the publicist or the author i'm not can't remember which one sent me this book to read and review and it took me a while to get to it but i'm really glad that i finally read it because i really enjoyed it it is a ya fantasy a gothic retelling or reimagining of charlotte bronte's jane eyre so there's a little bit of that setup a little bit of that romance um, the main character is a 19 year old girl and the person she's working for is around that same age. I think he's about 20 and he's been cursed he's living in a haunted house and she is working as an exorcist. So she's been hired to help cleanse this house of the demons that are plaguing this man and his his household because he's rich. And the story is set in Ethiopia or a place that looks like Ethiopia. I can't recall if it's actually mentioned in the book that it is Ethiopia, but they're eating Ethiopian food and the landscape and the people seem to be Ethiopian. So let's say it's set in Ethiopia, but there are things about it that I really enjoyed and other things that didn't completely work for me, but overall, I really like the book. It is a little bit of, uh, a spiritual bent in that there are these spirits um, that are plaguing this man in his home but the woman who's been hired as a deptera or an exorcist she has grown up in the church and, and the man who has trained her as this deptera has a significant position in the church as well so there is this comparison of what religion does and the fact that the spirits are manifestations of an evil eye so there's a little bit of a discussion of spirituality and religion but most of the book is really focused on the building relationship between this woman um, this young woman and the man who has hired her 
and <laughs> kind of a love triangle that develops and then resolves and the lessons that she learned really harshly as she was growing up and um like i said i don't read a lot of this genre so it's possible that my expectations were highly met because i don't have a lot in this genre to compare it to but i really like the book so would recommend it to you as well one more thing that I really enjoyed about this book was the fact that the characters were of African descent, but we didn't spend a lot of time focusing on their physical appearance. So it was mentioned quite often, very subtly, in ways that you knew what they looked like, but you didn't spend all your time focusing on them. Like, I think we spent more time focusing on the fact that this young lady has a scar and why she has the scar. But we also learned throughout the book that she has many other scars. And we're kind of poised to hate the person who has given her these scars. But then we also learn that she has these other scars inside that the people who may have been responsible for those scars were also not set up to completely hate them. So it's a little bit of a discussion of scarification and how much damage the people who love us inflict upon us as well. So there were some big themes that were discussed in this book, but not... Um, not like in a way that you had to deal with them. Like you could just read the book for pleasure. And so I like this one as well. So those are the three books that I finished this week. Um, I think I had started this one previously and then these two I started and finished during the week. So that's what I've completed. I'm also still reading On the Road by Jack Kerouac because um, this is a book that I enjoy when I pick it up, but I'm not always drawn to it. I also started All That She Carried by Tia Miles, and I'm really enjoying this. This is subtitled The Journey of Ashley's Sack, A Black Family's Keepsake, and I love the fact that there's a story to this sack, but we're also exploring a bigger picture beyond just this one physical, literal sack. So the sack in this story is a cotton bag, a cotton sack that a mother gave her daughter when her daughter was being sold into slavery. She gave her this sack with a story, a oral story passed on. And this daughter lived and produced her own family and eventually passed the bag down through generations. And three generations later, her granddaughter, I think, would have embroidered the, the story that she was told onto this sack. And then it was lost and found again and brought back into, brought into a museum, brought back into what I guess you, what you'd call the public domain. And I love that we're exploring this story for a story. I love that we're exploring this story, a history that could very easily have been lost because, you know, we're talking about a story that started with someone who would not have had access to sharing her own story or the tools. Um, and even if she did, people probably didn't want to hear her, a, a black woman in the 1800s. She probably um, couldn't find an audience, but that her story is being explored generations later and the, the depth of that story. So love this book. I'm loving it. I'm not, I'm not that far in. I'm only about 50 pages in, but I'm already loving what the author is presenting, not just of this physical story, this physical sack, but also what we learn from domestic arts and also the limitations of stories that we hear. How much of the stories that we hear actually reflect our society because when we choose to elevate some some voices and mute others, like we're tell, we're changing the stories that get told. So yeah, there's a lot about this book that I am loving, and so I could see who has the National Book Award winner last year. So I'm reading this one slowly, slowly enough, hoping to finish it before the end of the month, but not rushing through it at all. I'm also reading The Long Song by Andrea Levy, which is the Run Rat Reads book club pick this month. And I'm not that far into that one yet, but we have our book discussion on Sunday, so I'm going to have to speed it up. So you'll hear me talk about those books in my end of the month recap, hopefully. So for now, those are six books that I have started, three that I finished, three that I'm still working on, and would love to chat with you in the comments down below. Let me know what you've been reading recently and what you've been enjoying, and we'll chat down there. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. We'll be back soon with another video. You want to come say bye? Bye. You see them? Say bye-bye.
I'm emptying out mommy's supplies. Surprise, mommy, all your supplies are on the floor. 